Hello and welcome. You're watching Coronavirus Facts versus Myths. I'm Rishika Barwa. Cases in India have declined, but world over, cases are rising once again. And we are talking about the onset of a global third wave. The World Health Organization has confirmed this. Or in case of America, it's actually a fourth wave that the country is now seeing. However, unlike previous waves, the surge in cases in the US and the UK have not seen a corresponding surge in deaths. As per data from the United States on the 29th of June, an analysis by the Associated Press has reported that a former Biden administration advisor on COVID has said that 98 to 99 percent Americans who are dying in this fourth wave are unvaccinated. 1.1 percent breakthrough infections are being reported in fully vaccinated people and 0.8 percent deaths that, that's around five deaths per day are being reported in the fully vaccinated uh, people so a lesser number of fully vaccinated people are getting affected and proportionately if you compare it to the previous waves only 0.8 percent of fully vaccinated people uh, are dying because of COVID. A similar story is playing out in the UK as well, which is seeing its third wave of coronavirus infections, over 30,000 cases on a daily basis. The UK vaccine rollout, experts say, has also dramatically reduced deaths. Now, why do we say this? If you look at the data on the, in, in November 2020, when cases went up by 27,000, 400 people died. Now, compare that to July 2021, when cases went up by 27,000, eight deaths were recorded. So that's a rise in cases that's still happening, but a substantial decrease in deaths if you compare it to the previous wave. Many experts say that this is perhaps the most clear uh, you know, explanation or proof that vaccines indeed are working in the only way to fight the COVID-19 pandemic is to vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. Now, I spoke a short while ago to Dr. Peter Chin Hong, infectious disease specialist and professor at uh, the University of California, San Francisco. And I began by asking him about the situation um, in the U.S. Uh, Dr. Peter Chin Hong, we're at a critical juncture as far as the COVID-19 pandemic is concerned. Once again, cases in the U.S. are spiking. But not so much the deaths. A former Biden uh, advisor has in fact said that 98 to 99 percent Americans who are dying of COVID are unvaccinated. That's true. And when you look at my state, for example, in California, which has instituted a mask mandate again in L.A. and other counties are suggesting that for vaccinated people, they wear masks indoors. Uh, deaths haven't really budged, but cases have dramatically risen four times more in San Francisco and three to four times more in L.A. And you're talking about thousands and thousands of people. The Associated Press data has shown that only 1.1% fully vaccinated individuals are reporting breakthrough infections, even though 83% cases in the United States are of the Delta variant. Can we therefore safely say that COVID-19 vaccines are working even against the new strains? Exactly. Um, you know, in terms of the outcomes we care most about as clinicians, as healthcare professionals, it's not infections, it's really serious disease, hospitalizations, and specifically deaths. And if you really want to take a broader view, uh, we really want to make sure our healthcare system is equipped to deal with the number of cases we see. And infection, while it sounds scary to the average person, it's uh, scary in a vaccinated person. It actually has been studied and in most cases uh, feels just like the common cold. And is there data to suggest that in the United States, vaccinated people are at a reduced risk of hospitalization? Is there data to that effect at the moment? No, not at this moment. Uh, the LA County, for example, did an analysis of the last few months and still found that 99.5% of hospitalized cases and deaths are in the unvaccinated group. So if you extrapolate, that means that uh, breakthrough uh, hospitalizations and deaths are really, really uncommon in vaccinated individuals. So, so far, we're not really seeing that spillover into using possible resources. 
So vaccinating people then, Dr. Peter Chen Hong, is really the only way forward. Exactly. Vaccines remain our primary prevention strategy. And, you know, um, as one person said to me, vaccinate, not lockdown. That's really the mantra of the new COVID. We're not going to eliminate COVID, uh, but we can have it become a manageable disease once enough of the population is immunized. Thanks so much, Dr. Peter Chin Hong, for joining us. I think what you say is extremely important uh, that, you know, we need to go forward with a strategy where we vaccinate more people instead of going into lockdowns. Uh, you know, let's open this up for further discussion. Dr. Rahul Pandit, member of the Maharashtra COVID Task Force, Director of Critical Care Fortis Hospitals Mumbai, is with us and joining us from London because it's a very important, um, you know, it's very important to look at what's happening in the UK as well. We have Dr. Vikram Talaulikar. He is uh, the honorary senior clinical lecturer at the UCL uh, University. He's also an associate specialist in reproductive medicine, works with the NHS Foundation Trust. Thank you both very much for being with us. Uh, you know, Dr. Vikram, if I can begin by asking you, we've, you know, we've put out a sort of comparison of what happened in the UK in the second wave when cases went up by 27,000 and there were 400 deaths. And juxtapose that with when cases went up in the beginning of July up to, you know, uh, 27,000 cases once again. So the cases are still high, but only eight deaths recorded. What does this tell us? Thanks for having me on the show, Rishika. Yes, I think uh, we were expecting that this wave would happen. Um, everybody expected that the third wave would start uh, in summer. Uh, but everything was dependent on how well we took the vaccination coverage forward. So I think that has been the biggest rescue uh, in terms of the mass vaccination that we've got underway. So although the cases are happening, as you said rightly, about even 50,000 cases are coming forward every day. Yes. And it's expected that in the next few weeks, this figure might go up to even 100,000 or up to 200,000. But despite having such large number of cases, we are seeing that the hospitalization rates, severe illness rates and deaths are really, really low. And that is being attributed to the vaccination. We've got 90% having had the first dose, 70% uh, of the adults have now completed second dose. So that is building a big wall of defense against this virus traveling from one person to another and causing severe infection. So that is the key, just like your other uh, uh, speaker said just a while back. It's the vaccination that is proving to be the key difference here between the, uh, the first, second and the third waves, uh, where it's keeping the fatalities very low. All right. Uh, you know, does this then, uh, Dr. Rahul Pandit, put us, where does this leave India? I mean, if you look at this comparison and, we, you know, we're putting out that, that graph which sort of compares the rise in cases in the US and the UK, but not thankfully a proportionate rise in deaths like we saw in the previous waves. But if you also look at the vaccine percentage in both of these uh, developed nations, it's over 50% of their population is fully vaccinated. In the US, it's nearly 50% of the population that's fully vaccinated. Is India therefore at a huge disadvantage and are we not as well prepared uh, for a third wave as some of these other countries are? Rishika, good afternoon and thank you for having me on your show. If we look at the total number of vaccines which have been given by the Indians, it is more than any other country. The disadvantage what we have is our population, unfortunately. We have a very large population which needs to be vaccinated. And if we have to vaccinate the entire population which is eligible right now, we would require close to around 200 crore doses or so. And uh, we are somewhere around 40 crore doses, which is basically involving both uh, you know, both the first dose as well as the second dose recipients. So it does put a large number of population which is not vaccinated and which could be vulnerable. We also looked at the zero survey which was published by ICMR a couple of days ago, which had some encouraging results that a large number of our population was carrying some form of antibody. And those antibodies were probably going to offer us some protection. However, the antibodies which vaccine produces are the best ones because we know that they actually are meant to produce the neutralizing antibodies, which then protects us from death as well as from severe infection. So all I can say is that right now we need to just concentrate on one thing. And the most important thing is to try and get as many people vaccinated as we can. I know the vaccine supply is, is coming and I know it has, it has definitely improved than what it was in the month of 
uh, say June well, first know, week or second week. The other, the other important deduction and, and, and Dr. Pandit, I'm very glad that you acknowledge that while of course in terms of absolute numbers, we are, we have vaccinated, you know, the largest numbers, but our population, uh, you know, puts us at a disadvantage. So if you look at the total numbers, we are only over 6% of our entire population is fully vaccinated. So that does put us at a disadvantage. But, you know, I want to just talk about the other important uh, sort of revelation or conclusion that one can draw from what's happening in the US and the UK. And Dr. Vikram, uh, you know, there was a lot of skepticism and questions about whether vaccines will work against new emerging variants. Now, we know the Delta strain is dominant both in the UK and the US, but the data from the US shows that only 1.1% of breakthrough infections are being reported. Does this, in a certain sense, go to show that the vaccines are effective against a Delta strain and therefore give us hope that they'll work against future variants as well? Yes, you're right. Um, so, so far the Delta strain has been dominant both in the US and the UK in the recent reports. And it does look like the vaccines are quite effective preventing both severe illness or death from the Delta variant. And even if there were further mutations of this virus, uh, even if there were Delta plus or even other variants emerging, it's very likely that the antibodies that these vaccines are producing are going to be effective on a, on, on a larger scale against many of the new variants to come. So it's positive news that as long as we get the current vaccines rolled out, we should have a good wall of defense against this virus. Dr. Pandit, can we make that deduction? Because that was a huge cause of worry here in India as well. We know, for instance, the mRNA vaccines are more amenable to change. They can quickly adapt to new variants. We don't have those vaccines here in India just yet. But, you know, does this data in a certain sense, um, based on the US and the UK right now, go to show that vaccines are actually effective against new emerging variants as well? Rishika, that's actually very encouraging because when you do any trial, you are in a trial mode. And what needs to be ultimately the proof of the pudding is what happens in a real life scenario. And both the UK and the US uh, third and fourth wave actually is giving us a very good understanding of what is happening in the real life scenario. And that's very encouraging to know that the number of admissions are low, number of deaths are low, and also the number of severe infections are low. So vaccines probably offer all across the spectrum, whether we have new variants coming and they will definitely come. There is no reason to believe that we will not have another variant. The variants will definitely be there. But we should be assured right. ourselves and rest assured that vaccine will provide us the protection which is Do needed. Dr. Vikram, uh, you know, the last, uh, last comment to you, the CDC in the US has made a very interesting statement. They say that nearly every COVID-19 death now is preventable. Nearly every COVID-19 death is preventable. So the only way forward is to just vaccinate as many people as we can. What more do you think needs to be done? Well, I think um, they're, they're, they're partly right. I wouldn't say nearly every death may be preventable because remember that vaccines have limitations. Uh, the immune response that the vaccines create may differ from person to person. And people who have suppressed immunity, people who are vulnerable may still have quite a severe infection from this particular virus. Hmm. It's like the flu virus. Hmm. At the peak of the flu season, often the flu virus led to 300, 400 deaths a day. Mm. But we were often not concentrating on it as we are concentrating on COVID now. So the aim is to vaccinate as many as possible. Try and keep your trials going. Try and keep the studies going to see who needs a bit more vaccine dose, who needs a booster, who needs mm. further care. Try and make your hospital care as good as possible for the people who will end up in hospital. So you try and minimize any deaths and minimize any severe illness. It may never be 100%. The right. virus will stay around. It will cause infection but try and aim to get as good defense against it as possible. That's the more important. All right. Well, thank you both very much uh, for joining us. It is indeed uh, very interesting, very encouraging data that's coming from both the US and the UK and the writings really on the wall. The only way forward in the pandemic is to vaccinate as many people as quickly as we can. Short break here on the other side. We'll answer your questions on the coronavirus vaccine. Dr. Praveen Gupta will be live with us.
Welcome back to our special campaign, Vaccinate Indian Partnership with Google, where we look to answer questions that you may be Googling about the coronavirus vaccine. Dr. Praveen Gupta, Director and Head of Neurology, Fortis Memorial Research Institute, Gurugram is with us. Thanks so much, uh, Doctor, for being with us on NDTV. How long does it take to develop immunity against COVID once you've been vaccinated? So once you've been vaccinated, the body starts the immune response in which first it develops the IgM antibodies, which are gradually replaced by IgG antibodies. So after two weeks, you start to have decent immunity, but by three to four weeks, the immunity is really good. That is why after four weeks, most vaccines have a booster dose so that we transform short term immunity into a long lasting immunity. But with Covishield vaccine, it has been found that that immunity lasts for up to three months. That is why the second dose is taken at the end of three to four months. Right. And how much uh, or what level of immunity do you have after just a single dose of the vaccine? So with various vaccines, the data may be different. But it has been found that 55 to 85 percent patients at various times will have decent immunity with the vaccine. That is why to vaccinate a large number of people and provide protection to the community, most governments have focused on giving at least one dose of vaccine to maximum number of people to break the chain of transmission. Right. And, you know, speaking of vaccine immunity, uh, doctor, there are, of course, questions over whether uh, the immunity differs uh, based on different variants of COVID. Is that true? Could you say have more immunity against the original strain against which these vaccines were developed and with emerging variants, your immunity or your vaccine induced immunity could actually be lower? This is true in the sense that vaccine has a mechanism by which it acts. Now, based on the mechanism, the Covishield vaccine is a vector vaccine. It acts differently. The Covaxin acts differently and the mRNA vaccines act differently. So based on the genetic material that they are working against, they have different level of immunities against the mutants. You know, the other question that a lot of people have is about whether a vaccinated person can in fact give COVID to an unvaccinated person. So there are two aspects to this question. The vaccinated virus or the viral particle that you get is incapable of causing infection to the person himself. That means after vaccination, because you are vaccinated, you are not spreading the COVID to anybody. Okay. But in the event, a person who's vaccinated gets infected with COVID, which is a rare instance, then that person can transmit COVID like the other patients who are COVID positive. Right. And is this, Dr. Gupta, a big cause of concern? Because we know that if you're vaccinated, and especially if you're double vaccinated, the chances are that you'll have a very mild disease. You could even be completely asymptomatic and not know that you're actually infected with COVID, but you could potentially transmit the infection uh, you know, to someone and cause it severe disease in them. So I will put it like this. Suppose you are not vaccinated. The same thing can happen to you. If you are vaccinated, the chance that you will get asymptomatic infection is even less likely. Now, because you will get less severe infection, your transmissibility is lower than unvaccinated. It protects the other people also. Right. So it, it's that it's that argument on how, you know, no one's protected un, unless everyone's protected in a certain sense. Uh, right. OK, Doctor, we seem to have once again uh, got that audio trouble with you. But thanks so yeah. much for joining us. Thanks so Thank much, you. Doctor, for joining Thank us. You.